Hi friends, welcome to my another video. Today in this video, I will discuss about how to decide the location for the sounder and the visual alarm. This is the part 7th video in series of fire alarm system designing. So let's start this video. In order to understand this topic better, we have to understand what is sounder and stroke. So as we know well that the detection device like the smoke detector and heat detector is detecting the fire automatically. But once the fire has been detected through the smoke detector or heat detector, there must be a notification to the occupant that there is fire. So this notification can be done through sounder and strokes. So sounder and visual alarm will give indication and sound to the occupants that there is a fire in the building and you have to escape the building as early as possible. So this is the function of alarm and strokes. Now, as we know now that the sounder and strokes are the notification device, it is notifying to the human being or occupants inside the building that there is fire occurred in the building. But suppose there is one building, okay, which is only a warehouse and there is no people working inside. It's just a storage. So do we require any sounder and stroke because no one is there to notify, right? This is the question. So as it is very clear that where there is an occupant human being presence, that area always requires sounder and strobes. But we need also sounder and strobe where there is a no human being and it's just a storage. But the question here is why? Because there is no any occupant to notify. So in this case, for the property protection, okay, sounder is also essential. Why it will be installed outside of the warehouses so that if any fire happen it will notify to the firefighters here i will give you one example this is warehouse 34 and this is warehouse 33 okay if you will see here there is a sounder adjacent to this exit adjacent to this exit there is a sounder in same way here also there is a sounder here and there is a sounder here why because suppose fire happen here inside the warehouse so there is no people inside but this sounder will catch the alertness of other people who is outside of the warehouses to know that there is a fire in the warehouses so what we learned so far that sounder is important for the life protection as well as for the property protection in the last part of my video where i covered the topic how to decide the alarm zoning for the fire alarm system i explained you that suppose there is one small shop and there is one sounder here. If this sounder will start buzzing, the shopkeeper will move from this store immediately as he will see the fire. So this is the case of one out all out. Okay. There is a multi storage building of 30 floor and fire happens somewhere in the fifth floor. It is not good if the fire happen in fifth floor, all the floor sounder should start ringing. It will create a panic situation inside the building and from every floor the occupant want to leave the building so actually required the occupant in the fifth floor to leave the building immediately and to the adjacent floor occupant like in this case fourth floor and sixth floor but if the fire lala, fire sounder will ring for all the floors together then every floor occupant will try to leave the building this will create the panic in the building and it will increase the rush near the exit and it will overload the staircase. So strategic evacuation is important in the fire alarm system that could be done through the zoning of sounder and visual alarm. Hope you are very clear with this point. In one out, all out condition, if fire happen at one place, okay, then all the sounder will ring together in order to ev evacuate from the building entirely. But this is good for a small building as it will simplify the design, okay. It will enhance the immediate evacuation and it's required lower programming complexity. But for the higher rise, high rise building, as I told you, the dis disadvantage is over evacuation risk. As I told you, for the 13th floor and 29th floor occupant need not to leave the building if the fire happen in the 5th floor. Okay, so this is the over evacuation risk disadvantage. If we will not do the strategic evacuation, then it will lead to over evacuation risk. Then it will suppose any false alarm happen due to this false alarm, 
full building will be in the panic situation so this is not good and it is suitable for the phase evacuation like for the multi storage building there are some guides involved in order to decide the location of the fire alarm sounder let us discuss the guide in detail near escape route we have to place the sounder in the corridors lobby and staircase large open area suppose there is one big room okay then we have to place the sounder in the regular interval so that the sound will be inside the room evenly from when the sounder will start ringing sleeping room this is very important suppose you have an apartment and this apartment have three rooms okay and people are sleeping inside this bedroom so wherever there is a sleeping room like a bedroom that room must have the sounder high noise area suppose we are designing the fire alarm system for one project which is industrial project and there are lots of motor and other machineries okay so that motors and other machinery will create their own sound so the ambient sound of that industrial project is very high then we have to select such sounder that produce extra unit of attenuation more sounds okay in multi storage building at least one sounder required per floor near exit plus in the common spaces these are the common guidelines provided in order to install the fire alarm sounder in the fire alarm system designing suppose i have a bedroom okay then the at the sleeping level this is the bed level so this will be the sleeping level also at the sleeping level the minimum decibel of sound required is 75 decibel okay as the people are sleeping so he in order to arouse the sleeping person the 75 decibel sound is required as per authority so we have to place the sounder in such a manner that at the sleeping level the sound level minimum to be reach 75 decibel if we are designing the fire alarm system where the background noise level is high then we have to select a sounder which can produce 5 decibel more above the norms okay and but it should not exceed 120 decibel due to health and safety reason so where like for industrial project we have to know the background sound of the machineries and equipment during running time and we have to select the sounder that can produce the buzzing sound 5 decibel more than the background noise level okay but we should not go beyond the sounder sound of 120 decibel it is essential that at least one sounder are placed within each fire compartment suppose we have some compartmentation fire compartmentation then each compartmentation should required separate separate sounder sound attenuation is affected by numerous physical structures like doors furniture material used in the floor and walls okay general doors can attenuate 20 decibel of sound and the heavier fire rated door can attenuate up to 30 decibels to ensure that 70 decibel reach to the sleeping level in the bedroom the sounder must be placed inside within room we inside within the room this is very important because for the sleeping person in order to arouse it required minimum sound level is 75 decibel in order to achieve 75 decibel we need to place sounder in each rooms we should not depend on the sounder of the corridors why as i told you the normal doors can attenuate means can differ the level up to 20 decibel and the heavier door can reduce the decibel till 30 decibels so if we are not placing sounder inside the room and we are dependent on the sounder which is placed in the corridor and door is locked then 75 decibel sound will not reach at the bed level at as the door will attenuate the sound level produced by the sounder located in the corridor so to avoid such situation we have to place sounder in every sleeping room this is very important to note we have to place the sounder in the corridor in every 15 to 30 meter depending on the spl test what is spl test spl test is sound pressure level test okay as suppose in the corridor we have to achieve 60 decibel for example i am telling so we have to place the sounder at in such a manner that the 60 decibel will be reached in every point of this corridor okay we have to place the sounder in a regular interval so there not be any blind spot and inside the room we have to put sounder 
and in the staircase we have to place sounder at every landing for visibility and audibility hope you are very clear with this point as we know that suppose this sounder is producing 90 decibel so we cannot blindly install this sounder and thinking that this sounder will maintain the 90 decibel in all our area as the attenuation will be reduced with the interval as you see near the sounder it is 90 decibel but little far from the sounder it is 84 little more far it is reduced to 78 and at 16 meter it reduced to 66 decibel so we have to consider that with the distance the decibel level will reduce so we have to place sounder at every interval like we have to maintain 65 decibel in some of the space and we place one sounder here after 16 meter it will give only 66 decibel and we have to maintain 65 decibel throughout the space then what we have to do we have to install another sounder here so it will again maintain this 65 decibel in that space now let us discuss about the visual alarm visual alarm are included as a requirement of the equality act 2010 why because some occupant can have a hearing disability he cannot hear the sound produced by the fire alarm sounder in that case that occupant can see this light and he will know that there is a fire in this building and he will try to escape from the building so due to the equality act 2010 the visual alarm added in the fire alarm system and it is for those people who have the hearing disability they cannot hear the sounder sound during the fire there are some guidelines also in order to install visual alarm in the fire alarm system. If the surrounded sound is more than 105 decibel, the visual strobes are mandatory. As I told you, when there is a industry, suppose there is an industrial area and the sound level, background sound level is very high. Let's say it is 110 decibel. Okay. Then we have to place the sounder that can produce a decibel more than 110 decibel but we have to limit our decibel value to 120 decibel due to health and safety reason okay but as the background sound level is 110 decibel okay then it is not only mandatory to place the sounder which produce greater than 110 decibel and less than 120 decibel apart from that if the decibel point reach greater than 105 then the strobe visual strobe is mandatory now let us discuss about the other guidelines we have to avoid to install the strobe with the direct light direct sunlight and strong lighting why because with the direct sunlight and with the strong lighting we cannot see clearly the strobe is flushing or not as there is a strong direct sunlight and strong lighting so we have to avoid the installation of the strobe where there is a direct sunlight and where there is a strong lighting hope you are very clear with this point the other guidelines related to the visual alarm is that the visual alarm we have to select based on the viewing distance suppose we have a viewing distance up to 6.1 meter then we can go for the lightning uh, sorry fire alarm uh, visual alarm which can produce 15 candela and if our viewing distance corridor length is 9.1 meter and we are placing sounder uh, visual alarm here then the candela light produced by this visual alarm should be 30 candela if the corridor length or the viewing distance is 15.2 meter then we have to select the visual alarm that can flush up to 75 candela so based on the viewing distance we have to select the visual alarm if the viewing distance is less we can go for the lower candela visual alarm if the viewing distance is more then we have to go for the higher candela visual alarm device now let us discuss about the other guidelines related to the mounting height of the strobes if the strobe is wall mounted then the distance of the strobe from the ffl's finishing floor level to be 2 meter to 2.4 meter if it is a ceiling mounted strobe then we have to mount the ceiling mounted strobe as in, in the center as possible as much as possible we have to place in the center and we have to avoid placing behind any obstacle because it will block the flashing light of the visual alarm here as you see there is a sounder this is from the finishing floor level 2.1 meter 
and in the next photo you can see the sounder with the flusher means the sounder with the visual alarm that height is also from the ffl is 2.1 meter as i told you in the previous guidelines that we can install the sounder and flusher stroke from 2 meter to 2.4 meter from the ffl now let us take an example of our senior accommodation as you see there is sleeping room okay so each sleeping room have the sounder base this device is a smoke detector with sounder base so it will detect the smoke as well as it will notify during the fire so there is a sounder base in every sleeping room which is our guidelines right as i told you in every sleeping room we have to provide sounder so here there is a sounder in every rooms and as i told you we have to place sounder in the corridor in regular interval of 15 to 30 meter depending on the spl what is the spl sound pressure level suppose for our design the decibel required here is 65 decibel so we have to place the sounder in such a manner in regular interval that every corner of this corridor should have 65 decibel how we can achieve this one and how we can verify that there is a 65 decibel sound available every corner of the corridor by using acoustic modeling and we can use line of sight diagram and this two way we can verify that our sounder is producing that much attenuation that 65 decibel is reaching at every corner of the corridor and inside the room we place one sounder which we which should produce more than 75 decibel so that at the sleeping level of the bed it the decibel sound reach minimum to be 75 decibel i hope you clearly understood what are the different guidelines provided by nfpa and uae fire code related to the sounder and visual alarm and if you really like this video then please give thumbs up and subscribe to my channel please share this video with your electrical friends we will meet in any other video till then take care keep learning and bye bye thank you so much